Maria Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. You're about to hear the wonderful Thanksgiving Violet, written by Max Baker and directed by Carrie Preston. It features brothers Brandon and Jason Durden. Playwright Max Baker is best known for his writing for film, including the movies Constantine and Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. Max is also an actor and has performed on Broadway in the latest production of Cyrano de Bergerac and Jerusalem. Brandon Durden is best known for portraying Martin Luther King Jr. in Tony Award-winning Broadway production of All the Way, opposite Brian Cranston. Brandon can currently be seen on FX's The Americans and on Baz Luhrmann's upcoming Netflix series, The Get Down. His brother Jason Durden's recent theatrical credits include A Raisin in the Sun and August Wilson's Fences, both on Broadway. Director Carrie Preston is best known as an actress on HBO's True Blood, starring for seven seasons, and is a winner of an Emmy Award for her work on CBS's hit show, The Good Wife. And now, the wonderful Thanksgiving Violet. We are in a gated community subdivision in Brick, New Jersey. We're in Josh's apartment. He and his brother Russ are in black suits and ties. Well, that's that. I, I don't know what to say, but what, what do you want me to say? What, what can you say? Can't say anything. Boy, you really tossed out some stuff here. Hell of a culling. Where'd you get the snow globe? Mexico. I didn't know it snowed in Mexico. It's from our honeymoon. Oh, right. Can you put it back, please? I, I thought it was some global warming thing. Okay. <laughs> On the shelf, the other way, facing the other way, the way it was. Thank, thank you. When was that? Six years ago. Your wedding was six years ago? Feels like yesterday. Sorry, is that a sore subject? Dropped. Want some coffee? How about some coffee? Coffee? Yes, coffee. I'll make some coffee. Violet's cooking a pork roast. She wants me to persuade you to come home with me. No. She's cooking a pork roast. I'm not going. That's a nice gesture. No. She doesn't cook a pork roast for just anyone, you know. Certainly not me. I never get a pork roast. But for my brother, (laughs) insist, insist, she said, he come back with you. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. Okay. When was the last time you talked to Wendy? What's going on with you guys? Is, is, Is she coming back? I don't know. You don't know when you talk to her, or you don't know if she's coming back? Either. Both. Neither. I don't know. D- just don't, don't worry about it, okay? Oh, man! Oh, come on! Oh, oh man! What? <laughs> Damn cable's not working! You want to watch TV right now? Look, I, I, I can't take the silence. Silence kills me. Trust me. The second you leave here, I'm turning on every electrical appliance in the house. Well, come back with me. No. I'm calling the cable company. It can't wait? No, it can't wait. Okay. I'll make some coffee. English. <laughs> English. <laughs> English, damn it. Cable not working. Cable not working. My damn cable's out. Come. Representative, 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 representative. Oh, for God's sake. 20 minutes? Oh, great. Know what job I like to have? Paint color namer. All right, maybe that's not the job title, but trust me, some fools out there naming all these paint colors, damn it. Unusually high call volume. Paint. All right, take Benjamin Moore. They've got hundreds of paint options in collections, and every collection has a range of colors, so there's thousands of these crazy paint names everywhere. Organic grass, (laughs) twilight pink, Samantha yellow something, whatever, made up. These colored names are invented by someone. That's got to be a pretty low-stress job, right? I mean, I don't, I don't see this guy waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat wondering if a particular shade of blue should be called November Sky or Virginia Memories. <laughs> I mention this because Violet's on a let's repaint every room in the house kick. 
And I mean every last room. Paint chip samples taped all over the walls. She's trying to create flow or balance or something. Continue holding. Plus, she's into these reality TV survival shows on an island or wherever these people are, right? Continue holding. She, 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 she loves making decisions about who gets to survive or not based on their personalities. Continue holding. I'm talking to a machine. But don't talk to me instead. About paint colors? L I don't want you falling apart on me here. My wife left me. I just buried my best friend in the ground against his wishes, and the cable's out. I think I'm holding myself together pretty damn well. well calm down. No, I am calm. I'm perfectly calm. I'm, ho I'm, 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 on, I'm on hold, and I am calm. I'm, I'm fine. Not every personal flaw I have is a disorder, okay? <laughs> no, I know, I, I, I know how you're looking at me. And just because I have... Emotions doesn't mean I have issues. <laughs> Continue holding. What do you mean against his wishes? You said against his wishes, Waleed's funeral. Do you know what the bite is? The New York bite. It's a continental shelf where the Jersey Shore meets the Long Island Sound. That's where I should be today. In the middle of the ocean? Yes, 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 in the middle of the ocean. I've got a map. Here, here, look. Look at that. X marks the spot. Yes, X marks the spot. Uh -huh. That's where I should be today. Know who put that X there? Waleed. It was October, September. It was warm out. I can't remember. Wendy was still here, so geez, maybe it was August. August! Anyway, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. There's a banging on the front door. I'm not sleeping because, well, God knows even back then I wasn't sleeping. So Waleed is standing there in the front door, soaking wet, looking like he, he'd seen a ghost. He stumbles in. Wendy's halfway down the stairs wondering, what the hell's going on? Now, we have a fight about that later. And adrenaline is pumping through his body. This energy was wafting off him. I mean, the guy is wired, and he starts talking, model a minute, this crazy story about how he's in the back of some car buying coke from some guy he knows. Continue holding? And I mean, Waleed, he, he, he's a playboy, you know? The guy lived, so he's in the back of this car doing his drug deal. Next thing he knows, woo, 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 woo! Lights flashing, sirens, cop cars out of nowhere, swarming in. Half a second later, everyone in the car starts pulling out guns. Jesus. Yeah. The driver hits the gas, takes the hell off, and they start weaving in and out of traffic like, like, like they're on TV, Wait, you is know? Is this a joke? No, it's not a joke. No, this happened. To Waleed. It happened. So he's in the back of the car. And the main guy figures Waleed is the one who ratted them out. So he sticks a gun between his eyes. So Waleed's thinking either this guy's going to shoot him or the cops are. There's no way of getting out of this thing. Then, I don't know, maybe it's the hand of God or something. But the car spins out of control, sideswipes one of those sand barriers, flips in the air. Everyone's tumbling around somehow. Waleed gets flung out the door, lands in some bushes, hardly a scratch. Now, the cops arrive, chopper overhead. He's laying in the bushes thinking, move. Climbs over the nearest fence, falls into a swimming pool, then runs blindly into the night. Continue holding. Said he was running for 20 minutes flat out like crazed. Eventually, he realizes he's about three blocks away. Then he thinks, hey, I'll hide out at Josh's, which is fine, you know, because, you know, that's what friends are for. But <laughs> here's the thing. The whole time, the whole time he's running, escaping the multiple possible ways of being killed that night, the one thought in his head, the only thing Waleed is thinking is, if I die, I don't want to be buried. It's like a moment of clarity for him. I don't want to be buried. And he made me swear that night, if something happened to him, I'd see to it that he was cremated. And we got out this map, and he drew that X and said, here, here, scatter me here. And on no account, on no account, let my family put me in the ground like a turnip. His words, like a turnip. And their overblown family memorial plot at the Woodlawn Cemetery out by the damn airport. And I promised. I promised I'd charter a boat and go out to the middle of the bight and fulfill his wishes. And where were we today? 
I mean, come on, who were all those people? Cousins and aunts coming out of the woodwork. Who the hell was that giving the eulogy? I knew Walid. I was his friend. We've known each other since college. We were like that. Continue holding. And every time a plane went over, I could hear him saying in my head, thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks a lot. I'm a rabbit. I'm a scared, frightened, ineffectual little rabbit. Come home with me. No. You can give your input on the decorations. Are you kidding me? Look, I don't, I don't want my bedroom being painted something called quiet mist. I need backup. I, 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 I can't be around domesticity right now. What am I going to tell Violet? Tell her I can't be around domesticity right now. <laughs> yeah, continue holding. I can't tell her that. Why not? You don't know her the way I do. She's... You only know social Violet. Christmas Violet. The wonderful Thanksgiving Violet. Day-to-day Violet is a very different story, my friend. <laughs> this time last Tuesday, Violet, was a nightmare. Hang up the phone, will you? I've I've come this far. If I hang up now, I'll have to start all over again. Where are you going? Get the coffee. You want some coffee? Yeah, have some coffee. You're you're obsessed with coffee. Wood. Glue. Plans. Outboard motor. You don't have any milk. You want it black? Must be seaworthy. Your kitchen's empty. When's the last time you went to the store? Have you talked to Wendy? Have you even talked to her? How much do you think outboard motors are? Talk to her, will you? Reach out. Patch things up. Get your life back. You're not functioning. Josh, get get off the phone. No. Give me that. God, come on. What the hell did you do that for? I'm trying to engage with you here. Give me my phone. No. Give me my phone, Okay, just stop. Just just stop. Stop for one second here, okay? Just stop, okay? You're, all right, you're angry. Understandably, your best friend died. You're grieving. You may not know it, but you're grieving. No, I know when I'm grieving. Give me my phone. Okay, just lay off it while I'm here at least. All right, I, I really want to encourage you to talk to Wendy. Will you please? You can work things out together. I know you can. You're too good together. What else do you need to build a boat? A boat? Yeah, a boat. I'm going to build a boat. I'm going to build a boat, and I'm going to take something of Waleed's, I don't know, something he gave me, and, and I'm going to build a boat, and I'm going to go out to the bight uh, and, and, and drop it there. Can't you just rent a boat? No. I have to apply myself, d- d- do something, atone for my shortcomings, just sweat out my guilt, make amends. Okay, now you're transferring. Oh, my God. If you start trying to self-help me right now... No, I, I can't self-help you, Josh. Only you can do that. Don't talk to me like I'm one of your damn patients. Well, I don't have patients. I have clients. You're not my therapist, Russ. You're my brother. I know I'm your brother. So start acting like one. I am. I'm trying to help you. I, I see you in this state. I have skills. Yes, I'm using the skills I've acquired. Yes, but that's, that's a way I can help you. I'm helping you. Oh, is that what you're doing? Come to dinner. No, I'm building a boat. Why did you have to go and screw my assistant? I, 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 I didn't screw your no, assistant. You threw everything into chaos. You know that? Wendy and, 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 and not to mention putting me in an excruciatingly awkward situation. I didn't screw your assistant. I had to Russ. let her go. I lost a good assistant. Well, what do you need an assistant for anyway? Research, organization, play. Look, I, it doesn't matter why I need an assistant. It matters you went and screwed her. I didn't screw her. Violet flipped her lid over this. You blew up everyone's life in one fell swoop. I didn't screw your assistant, Russ. I spanked her, okay? (laughs) All right, you want to know what happened? She wanted to be spanked, so... I spanked her. (laughs) Cone of silence. You spanked her? Yes. She just read Fifty Shades of Grey. I don't know. You spanked... (laughs) My assistant. Well, she asked for it. Literally. A couple of times, that's all. Cone of silence. Jesus. Yeah. Let me ask you something. 
Are you scared? Of what? I don't know. Everything. Life. Death. What happens next? I don't think about it. Violet. You're scared of Violet, aren't you? No. I'm not scared of her. I'm just... She, she, I'm not scared of her. I just... I just have this feeling that something's coming, you know? Like something's on its way. Like... Like I'm on a collision course with a train. I don't know what it is. It's a thing, an entity, but it's big and solid and real. And we're both on the same track heading toward each other. And one day, one day we're going to hit. The day of impact is coming. And then what? What happens then? You just heard The Wonderful Thanksgiving Violet, written by Max Baker and directed by Carrie Preston. It featured Brandon Durden as Josh and Jason Durden as Russ. And here you are. We're with playwright Max Baker, director Carrie Preston, Jason Durden, and Brandon Durden. Thanks for staying to talk. We have two live brothers, Brandon and Jason Durden, playing two brothers in this short play. So what is the advantage or disadvantage of being in a rehearsal room with your brother? You know, I can tell him he sucks and he won't punch me. I won't punch him him in the room. (laughs) On the ride home, though, it's... No, it's, it, it, you know, I think there's, there is definitely an av- advantage. There is, I mean, Jason has a, has a point that th- you can forego the niceties that you usually have to, you know, just for social decorum, you really have, if you don't know another actor, even if you do know a- another actor, you still have to be nice, right? And sometimes, uh, and sometimes doing the, the hard work, it, it, you can't be nice. You don't have time to be nice. You can't afford to be nice. You can be kind, but you don't have to be nice, you know what I mean? That takes a lot of effort and energy that not necessarily is connected to the piece you're working on. So I, I think that is an advantage that, you know, you show up the first day of rehearsal and if you say you, you, f- you just met these people for the first time, you say, you got four weeks, you're a married couple for 25 years, go. Well, it, you say, we show up, we say, well, you've been brothers for 35, 40 years, go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And you don't have to worry whether he likes you or not. Yeah. <laughs> Max Baker, playwright. Your initial stage direction says this short play takes place in a gated community in Brick, New Jersey. So I looked up Brick, New Jersey, and it has repeatedly been in the top five, if not number one, as the safest American city. Brick has also been home to the heroin epidemic, ranked sixth in the state of New Jersey in heroin abuse. Uh, It received 30 inches of snow in a recent December, and in October 2012, parts of Brick were (laughs) devastated by Hurricane Sandy. So, Max, why Brick? (laughs) Well, for all those reasons. Can you elucidate? Brick's a good name, isn't it? (laughs) Feels solid. Um, I think, yeah, I don't know. I think um, I was looking for somewhere that had a gated community. I think the fact that... um, he lives in a gated community is significant to his character in some way. And I think New Jersey is full of gated communities. <laughs> and it's near the shore. I think being near the water was, uh, had some impact on the decision as well. But, you know, you've got to set a place yeah. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Carrie Preston, director, you're still better known as an actress. Lots of people know you as Arlene Fowler on True Blood. What attracts you to directing... And to Max's play, you know, I, I started doing plays when I was a little girl. And even then, I was like, I was the weirdo who, you know, the kid who wanted to get all the kids together in the backyard and, and direct them in plays, even, you know, when I was like eight. So I knew that, you know, this was something that was always going to go hand in hand with my acting. And I find that one, you know, really feeds the other. You know, what I learn as an actor, I'm able to uh, take and, 
And, and st I'm able to steal from other directors, to be honest, because you know, I have the, the great benefit of being directed by lots of different kinds of people. And so I can sort of pick and choose and say, oh, I, I like what that director did, but I'm, I'm, I'm never going to do that. You know? <laughs> and so I'm able to you know, take that and, and really feed it into the work. And so I find that you know, with directing, you get to exercise all the muscles. When you're an actor, you kind of have to get, you get yourself in the skin of the one character and that's your responsibility. Um, but as a director, you get to kind of get inside the mindset of all the characters. And, you know, so a play like this, I worked with Max, uh, he's an actor as well, and I directed him in a reading and he was like, hey, I like the way you were directing me, will you come and direct this? So, you know, it, it's fun to be working with a playwright who's also an actor um, because there's just a common language that, that we all have and there's like a shorthand that, you know, we can, and when something like this, such a short process, you don't have a lot of time uh, to work on it. So you do have to have those shorthands, you know, ready to go. And, and so these guys were really great about that. And as far as the significance of the, the play or the bite or even being set in brick, you know, it seems to me the play is dealing with like this great terror. And like, I think right now, you know, we as a culture are just, I think we're just feeling very off balance. We're very much feeling like what Brandon's character is feeling, which is just like something is coming for us, you know? And it is in lots of places right now, every day. And I know for me, I wake up, I turn on the news and it's, I'm terrified, you know, to see what's happening. And it's making us, it's being reduced down to what's happening one-on-one -on -one with each other. And I felt like I was attracted to the play for that reason, you know, what's going on when terror gets reduced down to two people in a room dealing with their own personal lives, so. Fabulous. Max, you named the play The Wonderful Thanksgiving Violet after an offstage character, Russ's wife, Violet. Plus, you brought a holiday to the title, which doesn't figure in the play except as a character description. So there will be surprise radio stations coast to coast <laughs> airing this on Thanksgiving. Uh, how did this piece come to be called The Wonderful Thanksgiving Violet? Can you or anyone uh, address that? I don't know how it came to be called that. <laughs> I don't... Irony, yeah. perhaps? I mean, I think it's... No. 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 <laughs> but it was a good... It was, you it was know, a good it was, guess. Yeah, we could throw that one out there. Um, I don't know. I think, I think the whole concept of a 10-minute... of this, It started... This was a sort of 10-minute play. It started out, and then I wrote a whole bunch of other stuff with other characters that we don't see in this particular play with that are referenced. But I, the whole concept of a 10-minute play is odd anyway. The whole concept of a short play is a strange thing to even contemplate. So trying to single out the title as being something that makes sense is difficult. Well, I mean, well, I can, well. I'll interpret it for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'll tell you why you did it. I'll tell you. Because he says that the, the, you don't know the real Violet. You know, you only know the wonderful Thanksgiving Violet. So you only know what's, what the world is seeing. But what's underneath is something far more kind yeah. of terrifying. And so that's certainly how I... That's, that's what he meant, y'all. That's, that's what he meant. That's why I wanted her to direct, right, you see. Yeah, look, you know, he knows. That's yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Max you. Baker, author of the wonderful Thanksgiving Violet, Carrie Preston, its director, and cast Brandon Durden and Jason Durden. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. You've been listening to Playing on Air, Great American Short Plays with Great American Actors. Recorded live in front of a studio audience at Brick Arts Media in downtown Brooklyn. Visit us at playingonair.org on Facebook and Twitter. Original music by Tom Cochang. Recording and sound design by John Kilgore. Playing on air staff, Julia Wetherill, Quinn Tai, and Sasha Spitzer. For Playing on Air, I'm series producer Claudia Catania. <laughs>